Hey guys, Bice Bump here, bringing you this Frost Death Knight Shadowlands beginner guide. This video is for everyone out there who's picking up the Frost Death Knight for the first time or possibly returning to it after a bit of downtime. I will cover everything I deem essential but at a very high level, so quick and dirty without going too much in depth in terms of explanation and not talking talking too much about different cases, right? Using talent A over talent B in case C. That is for other videos which will come later down the line. Today I will cover the uh, covenant choice, also taking a look at talents, rotations, stat priority, enhancements, legendaries and finally conduits. So it's every system out there and it's recommendations for how to use that system. First of all, the covenants. So I do know a lot of you have already picked up your first covenant, but a lot of people haven't had time to level the Death Knight or not reach level 60 yet. First of all, all the covenants, they are very close. So do not hesitate to pick up whatever covenant you think is the most fun, most rewarding, or possibly the coolest, okay? However, I do have some recommendations and they do depend on build. If you're running dual wheel builds, I do re recommend picking up Night Fae. It's great mobility and the damage is solid in single target and you get this amazing cleave with a death stew obliterate cleave. If you're planning to run a two-handed build, especially obliteration, I would recommend picking up Kyrian. The single target is simply too great. Again, don't take this as the truth, pick up whatever you want to play. When it comes to talents, I recommend different talents depending on if you're using dual wield or two-hander. This right here is my recommended dual wield build, is using the Breathless in Ragosa talent. You can also run their obliteration in the final tier and that will only change up to murderous efficiency and inexorable assault. It's going to be very similar to the two-hander build. For two-hander, this is the build I recommend. It's the best throughput out there. As I've just mentioned, you can pick this up as a dual wield as well, and it will be a very good build for that case. Generally, two-hander builds are not performing as well as dual wield builds. Unfortunately, they're a couple of percent behind, but I'm sure a lot of you out there will still pick it up because you do want to play with a good old two-hander weapon. Now for the rotation, we have uh, two different use cases I want to look at, single target and AOE. Uh, for single target, we have a quite simple priority. We want to use our Remorseless Winter ability on cooldown. It comes every up every 20 second. Make sure to keep track of that and use it as soon as it comes up. Second, we want to use Howling Blast whenever we get Rhyme procs. This is so that we don't overlap Rhyme procs and make use of them as quickly as possible. Thirdly, we don't want to cap Runic Power, so use Frost Strike if you're high on Runic Power. This is like 80 plus or something. Finally, we want to spend our runes on Obliterate and then just use Frost Strike as a filler. Generally, this rotation will be just three spells, Obliterate, Howling Blast and Frost Strike and then you kind of use them based on the procs you get. For AoE, the only difference comes into play when we pick up the Frost Scythe talent and the Glacial Advance talent if you want to. If we have Frost Scythe talent, that's pretty much the only button we're going to press in AoE. We're going to overcap and Runic Power, but that's fine. If we pick up Glacial Advance, use that on cooldown, it deals a lot of damage. Now, the, the Frost Rotation changes quite dramatically when we use our cooldowns. For Breaths and Ragosa, when you use that, do not use abilities that cost Runic Power. As soon as you press Breaths and Ragosa, you only want to press stuff like Obliterate, Frost Scythe, and Chains of Ice. Things that use runes and give you Runic Power. If you accidentally use something that costs Runic Power, it's going to end your Breath window very early. When we have the obliteration talent, we want to do something we call weaving. 
This is because obliteration makes your Howling Blast and Frost Strike trigger killing machine procs. So what you want to do is hit Pillar Frost, follow up with either Howling Blast or Frost Strike, and then go to Obliterate, and then go back to Howling Blast or Frost Strike, and then Obliterate, and then back and forth. That's the weaving we use. We use Howling Blast when we get a Rhyme proc in that, in that section of the weave, Frost Strike if we don't have a Rhyme proc. For strat priority, strength is our best stat, which also makes it so that eye level is a solid option, right? Generally, if you look at an item, it has an eye, higher eye level than what you currently have, do pick that up because the strength will most likely make it an upgrade. The second priority when it is mastery, works well in all the builds. That's both two-handed builds and dual wield builds. It's generally our strongest stat and scales really well in AoE. For the other stats, crit, haste and burst, they're all quite even. Just get a uh, balanced, uh, just get, get a balanced amount of everything. Don't put everything in crit, don't put everything in haste, just get a little bit of each. For enhancements, we got some enchants. For the cloak, we want to fortify speed. For the chest, we pick up eternal stats. We can pick up Eternal Skirmish as well. It's going to be better if you have very little gear, but after you picked up a couple of raid pieces, Eternal uh, Stats is the go-to one. For the gloves, it's Eternal Strength. For the rings, it's Tenet of Mastery. The rings enchant can change if your stat weights are a little bit different, but the Mastery one is generally a very good option to go for. Now for the weapons, if you're running dual wield, you want to put Race Rice on your man main hand and Fallen Crusade on your off hand. We put the Razor Rice on the main hand because that makes it so that Frost Scythe applies Razor Rice to all targets. Otherwise it doesn't matter, so generally just put it on the main hand so when you do pick up Frost Scythe, you already got it on the main hand. For two-hander, we pick up uh, Rune of the Fallen Crusader for Mythic Plus because that scales better than AoE. And then for raids, we do use Razor Rice because that brings the most single target damage. When it comes to gems, we pick up Masterful Jewel Cluster, it's the Master of Gem. Again, if your stats are a bit odd and you have something that's better than mastery, do pick up the gem that gives that stat. For the food, the feast is the best option. If you don't have a feast, pick up the ravioli with applesauce. That's the mastery food. Again, pick up another stat if the stat is better for you. Ores and stones, these are stuff you can put on your weapons on top of your rune forges, which act as uh, additional enchants. We want to pick up shaded sharpening stone or shaded weight stone. It depends on what kind of weapon you have. If you have swords, you pick up the sharpening stone. If you have a blunt weapon, you pick up a weight stone. Sharpening stone is for all the sharp weapons. Flask, spectral flask of power, and potion is the spectral strength one. These are used in all cases. Very simple, very easy. Now for legendaries, the best one out there for raids is the Cotera's Favor. The best single target output legendary and I would recommend going for that one if you're planning to raid a lot. For Mythic Plus we have Rage of the Frozen Champion, it's a great option if you're running Breath of Sinagosa. If you're running Obliteration, do pick up Biting Cold for Mythic Plus. Great AoE, solid single target, very good legendary for Mythic Plus. For Conduits, the best one out there in all situations is Everfrost, so do pick that up as soon as possible. Before you get that, Accelerated Coal is a good option. Accelerated Coal is also a good option for the second conduit. Other than that, all the conduits that improve the uh, Covenant cost ability are also good options early. So if you can't pick up anything else, do pick up the conduit that improves your Covenant class ability. All right, that, were, that was everything I wanted to cover today. I do hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, do you leave them down below. If you like this, this video, do give an upvote. If you disliked it, do give a downvote. You can always find me on the Acris Discord. I'm always more than happy to answer any questions and you can send me a PM if you fancy. Also consider subscribing if you want to see more of this kind of content. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more content. Thank you.